And yes, for this video, we are going into a how-to videos on, well, how to arm yourselves as the Scottish soldiers at the Battle of Bannockburn. Which, if none of y'all understand, this is the anniversary of the battle on June 23rd to 24th, on which the Battle of Bannockburn took place. And I decided for the anniversary, I might as well do a how-to videos on, well, how to arm myself as... Well, a Scottish soldier, especially. Now, this is going to be the first one with the common spearmen, or pikemen, of the Scottish Shieldtrum formation. And in such, we'll hopefully do the man-at-arms, and then also do the Robert the Bruce type armor, or as well the armor that of which uh, none other than the Black Douglas wore at the Battle of Bannockburn and such. So, uh, yeah, because we're going to try our best to, well, get in the historical look and feel of what they would have looked like and such. But yes, now it today it has rained a while, so this heavy rain is perfect for that type of weather during the time of the Battle of Bonnickburn. Now, uh, I, just to be clear, y'all, I have recorded this prior before our anniversary, so yeah. Now, I want to put this out here, y'all. Uh, actually, I'm actually Scottish on my mother's side, and only a slight bit Scottish on my father's side because we descended from Vikings who pretty much went into the northern highlands of Scotland and the clan of Gunn, which, my surname being Swanson, which is a pox abelium in Scotland, meaning peace or war. And in such, well, we have, there's a lot of Viking descendantry up there in northern Scotland, so you get the point. But in such, we later on moved back and such and such, but it's kind of confusing, I know. Uh, but in such, my grandfather and such, uh, which for my great-grandmother fled from Nazi Germany. So, we get some sort of heritage from that area. And as well, can also be seen with my mother, who of which actually has a mix of between of Irish, Scot, and Welsh, and including English. And in fact, we are even a descendantry of none other than the Stuart side of the family, meaning the Robert the Bruce himself. That's right, I'm technically a descendant of, well, somewhat descendant of Robert the Bruce and the royal family of England to this day, but... I don't like to brag about it and such because, well, the story of the Stuarts is a very sad and, well, deadly one, if we put it. But in truth, I am happy to say I am a proud descendant of Robert the Bruce. And in such, every time when I hear the term Bruce, I'm always thinking of Scottish independence. And the major thing is, the film Outlaw King is probably a really cool one to my ancestor, but they didn't exactly get to the best historical attribute on many of the battles, because I still wish they'd shown the Battle of Bannockburn, not the Battle of Loudon Hill. 
Because, if we know one thing, the Battle of Bannockburn is pretty much the major massacre of the English, and in such they had failed and lost more than they can count. But yes, we will be covering the weaponry that was used at the battle and including the type of arms and equipment. Now first we're actually going to start off with the common spearmen, of which these were the light soldiers. These guys were pretty much not actually armed with anything. They would have had uh, pretty much mostly just gambits and armor or less to none armor at all. And the fact is, most of this type of arms and equipment that they acquired were mainly because of the fact of the guerrilla war that Robert de Bruce had claimed on the English. If none of y'all know how Robert de Bruce actually did his major victories in Scotland in the first place, he actually first performed major victories by using guerrilla style warfare, defeating the English army in many type of forms, and as well burning down his castles, such as we see in the Outlaw King. And in such, well, that's the thing. If any of y'all know in history of well, guerrilla style warfare, guerrilla warfare is one of a hellish type of nightmare, and even the strongest armies in history can never, well, overcome. So, uh, yeah, why don't we actually uh, get right down into uh, this presentation for the common spearmen, and, well, we'll see how it goes from there.
Now, was that thrilling, y'all? Now, I hear many of you already, Templar, uh, what were all the songs and such you had in here? Well, I did try looking up Swa uh, Scott Swahe, if none of y'all know what that is. It's actually, or if any of y'all don't know what it is, it's technically a, based off of a poem that was written by a man known as Blind Harry, as he was known in such when he stated on the independence of Scottish independence from well, none, none of them, William Wallace, and as well when Bruce took over the reins of independence itself. Now I want to put this out here, y'all. Arms and armor for the common soldier at this point in time were extremely low. However, the common soldier for the Scottish spearmen they were extremely lower than that. Now, the only way the Scottish Spearmen could pretty much win the battle was using the massive shield trim formation and as well a mix between archers behind them and also mixed infantry, in which were known as man-at-arms, which very soon we will be covering the man-at-arms very soon. These guys were actually known to fight in this side of the, well, Scottish uh, shield trim formation. They would have pulled down the English knights from their horses and as well gouged them out using a dagger meaning they would have gone for the very weak spots of the body, such as the eyes, the throat, and as well the armpits, or worse, uh, the uh, groin area, which was probably the most common place that most people attacked in the historical medieval warfare. But, yes. Now, I also hear many of you already, Templar, would you ever decide doing the English side, since you were technically uh, descended from them also? Maybe, but during the time in history at this point in time, I'm not a big fan of the English. And we all know why, especially from the years in history, the English were kind of major assholes to both Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. See my point? So, yeah, in fact, if your ancestors were both on the same side, like, if you had ancestors on both on the same side, which group would you want to cheer for? The guys that were the major dickholes, or the guys that were fighting for their country and independence and for their lives, their homes? See my point? You wouldn't want to choose the uh, idiot version, unless you're the major dumbass of the family. <laughs> but I know, hear, I hear many of you already, but Templar, the English were wanting this and that. Well, yes, but they only believe in conquest, especially under the reigns of Edward I, or Edward the Longshanks, as he has also been known as the Hammer of the Scots, for a reason. He had actually also slaughtered thousands of innocents, especially in Wales. So, yeah, as the Sc as pretty much in history, as many Scots would say, not calling it cow, I shall end up goodly on a canyal. <laughs> if any of my Scottish speakers from the medieval Gaelic understood me, then pretty much they understand true Scottish language. But if any of you are just under the mostly of those idiot type groups that pretty much think that Scots always speak English, here's a thing that you have gotten wrong. It's true. I just stated that the Scots of Liberty will die and draw our dearest veins rather than be made a slave. Hence, in the term of the Scots Swahey. <laughs> I know, I'm a major Scottish fan in history. And yes, do I support that Scotland should be its own nation? Well, let's see, read the damn shirt. <laughs> yes, I'm a major supporter of Scotland's independence movement, and it still am, even though we still keep losing because of some idiots. But, yes, you can see my point. Scots do not like to be tied down by tyranny. <laughs> hmm, kind of sounds familiar to us Texans, if you think about it. But anyways, hopefully you like this video, like and subscribe for more. And as well, guys, if you want me to cover any type of armor of videos in history, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to get right to them immediately. As well, y'all, I'll be happy to talk about anything else that you might need to know about the Balabonic Barn, especially. But pretty much, we are going to be doing an entire, uh, well, on anniversary of the 23rd to 24th, on that video on the history of those famous soldiers of the Scots who fought and died for their independence of their nation against the reign of tyranny. But yes, y'all, very soon we will be getting into the medieval Scottish man-at-arms, and which looks nearly identical to the commoner, however, they are not. They are slightly different for one major reason, and you will soon see in the next video. But anyways, guys, 
Hopefully you liked this video, like, subscribe for more, and as well, click that bell button for notifications, and check us out on Facebook, so that way y'all can see upcoming videos, and as well, oh, uh, what's, well, gonna come up soon. Anyways, guys, it's been Templar. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.